in the previous video, you were given an idea about graph theory in which it can be used to find on the shortest path from one location to another location. And you also learned how it originated. In this video, you will learn different terms under graph theory. So first, an undirected graph G is a pair V comma E consisting of a set V of G of vertices and a set E of G of edges that are formed using an ordered pairs of vertices in V of G. Now we say that two vertices U and V are adjacent if they are connected by an edge. For example, if this is the vertex U and this is the vertex V, if they are connected by an edge, that means that U and V are adjacent. Okay, now consider the graph G on your screens right now. Now, the vertex set of graph G would consist of the points A, V, B, C, D, and E. So, it's given as follows. And then, the edges are A, B, A, C, B, C, C, D, C, E, and D, E. The order and size of a graph is just the number of vertices and the number of edges that you can find from the graph. So for example, in this particular graph on your screens, the number of vertices is 5 and the number of edges is 6. So therefore, the order of this graph G is 5 while the size is equal to 6. Whenever a graph has two vertices connected by more than one edge, then we say that the graph G has multiple edges. Now also, if a vertex is connected by an edge to itself, then we call that edge a loop. So for example, in the graph on your screens, the vertices D and E are connected by more than one edges, particularly three edges. So therefore, this graph has multiple edges. Furthermore, the vertex A is actually connected to itself by a loop. Now, whenever a graph contains multiple edges or loops, we call that graph a multigraph. Otherwise, we call the graph a simple graph. The graph on your left is an example of a multigraph and the graph at the right is an example of a simple graph. Let u be a vertex in a graph G. The degree of the vertex u, denoted by this symbol, is the number of edges that are incident to the vertex u. When we say incident, it's the number of edges that are connected to the vertex u. Now, another concept would be the neighborhood of the vertex u. The neighborhood of the vertex U is denoted by this symbol and it is defined as the set of all vertices that are adjacent to the vertex U. Okay, so for example, let's take a look at the graph on your screen. The neighborhood of the vertex A would consist of the vertices B and C because B and C are adjacent to the vertex A. Now in this case, since there are two edges connected to vertex A, then we say that the degree of the vertex A is 2. So same explanation goes for the neighborhood of B and the degree of B, as well as for the neighborhood of C and the degree of the vertex C. Now, a path in a graph is defined as a walk on the graph in which all vertices are different. In this case, all edges would also be different. So for example, on the graph on your screens, the walk E, C, A, B is an example of a path of length 3 since the vertices and edges are all different. However, the walk C going to A and then going to B and then going to C and then going to D is not a path because 
the vertex C repeated in the sequence. A graph G is said to be connected if for every pair of vertices U and V in the graph, there is a path from vertex U going to vertex V. Otherwise, G is a disconnected graph. Let us consider the two graphs on your screens right now, disregarding the arrow heads of the edges. In the graph at the left, it is connected because uh, if we move from one vertex to another, there would always be a path connecting the vertices. However, in the graph at the right, and we consider the vertex 4 and the vertex 2, there would be no path connecting vertex 4 up to vertex 2. Also, if we will consider vertex 6 and vertex 1, there would be no path existing between vertex 6 and vertex 1. So the graph is disconnected. Now, a graph is said to be a weighted graph if all the edges of the graph G are assigned with numerical values or weights. So, for example, the two graphs on your screens right now are examples of weighted graphs because all the edges of the given graphs are weighted or are labeled with numerical values. Now, let us define what is a directed graph. A directed graph B is a pair B, comma A consisting of a set B of B, which we call the set of vertices, and a set A of B of arcs that are formed using ordered pairs of vertices in V of B. Now, comparing this with undirected graph, instead of calling the lines as edges, we call the lines as arcs, but this time the arcs would contain arrowheads, which would define the direction of the lines. Now, if U and V are vertices of the directed graph B, then we write the arc from U to B as U comma V and close with brackets. In this case, we say that the vertex U is adjacent to the vertex V or the vertex V is adjacent from the vertex U. So for instance, if this is the vertex U and this is the vertex V, and then we have an arrowhead from U to V, then we say that the arc is labeled as U comma V and close inside square brackets. In the explanation in the previous slide, we call the vertex U as the initial vertex, while the vertex V is the terminal vertex. Now, similar to undirected graphs, the order and the size of a directed graph would be the number of vertices and the number of arcs in the directed graph, respectively. Now, consider the directed graph on your screens right now. This graph has vertex set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and its order is equal to 6 because it has 6 vertices, while the arcs of the given graph would be 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 4, 6, 4, 5, 5, 6, and 6, 3, and closed in square brackets. Now, observe that whenever we have an arc, we cannot interchange the pairs of numbers. That's why in directed graphs, the arcs are labeled as ordered pairs.